Good morning and what's happening YouTube. Chef Steve Pop here with another brand new recipe. It's an oldie bit of goodie, the lobotomizer. The lobotomizer is what got us on TV. It was the claim to fame. It's what brought You Gotta Eat Here, here. And it's one reason why our episode is on such high rotation on the Food Network Canada. So today we're bringing you the lobotomizer, one of the best, most amazing breakfasts slash brunches possible. It's got a little bit of everything. We've got crispy cheese, smoky bacon, a wonderful malted pancake. And you know what? It's gonna be a great addition to your brunch lineup. You're gonna win at breakfast. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is assemble our dry team. Measure out your malted milk powder, kosher salt, baking powder, sugar, and all-purpose flour, and then set them to the side. Then measure out your wet team. Canola oil, one egg, and 2% milk. What makes this pancake batter special is the malted milk powder. It makes the pancakes taste like the best waffles on the planet. And not to worry, if you're having a hard time getting malted milk powder, we've got a link in the description. You can get it no problem. Shipped right to your door. Assemble your malted pancake batter by adding all of the dry team to a four quart mixing bowl. Mix with your whisk to combine. Bring the wet team together and whisk into your dry team. Careful here, we don't want to overmix this. Let your batter relax in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes or up to 12 hours. Definitely best to do it the night before. Then we need to prepare our garnishes. I would like to see everyone prep these ingredients the day before, just to illustrate how much easier cooking can be when you break up the work, just like professional chefs do. Having everything ready before you begin to cook is one of the keys to being the best cook you can be. Now our garnishes here are aged cheddar cheese, bacon dice, and bias cut green onions. Now speaking of secrets, the secret to the best bacon ever is to cook it in the oven. And if you line your baking sheets properly, cleanup is so simple. Now here, I'm using parchment sheets, but this technique can be used with rolled parchment as well. So we're gonna trim the excess and then cut the corners at a 45 degree angle. Now these 45 degree angle cuts will allow us to dovetail the corners and create higher sides. This knowledge is completely transferable. It could be used for meatloaf, brownies, or whenever you need it. While traying the bacon, make sure that the slices overlap by a quarter inch, no more. We don't want tan line bacon. Now, when we go to cook this, we're gonna cook it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 25 minutes. My experience says 27, but your oven could be different. Allow to cool just a bit before we use a clean towel and tap the bacon slices to remove the excess bacon fat. Tapping off the excess fat will help prevent the stack from slipping and probably save a trip to the ER. Speaking of cuts, try to keep the tip of the knife on the cutting board as much as possible. Remember, Safety first, not safety third. Continue to process your bacon slices into dice. Once you've got that accomplished, transfer your bacon dice into a bowl. Now, if you can get your hands on pre-cut bacon dice, I would totally recommend it. It's so much better. Now, Let's move on to the green onions. Cutting anything thin and on a bias is a matter of practice, practice, practice. Remember that speed and accuracy are rarely friends. So take this slow, only go as fast as you're comfortable with. Now getting comfortable with a knife isn't easy, but if you use your index finger as a guide, making these cuts will be easier. We're gonna wanna process down four to five green onions. When that's all done, grab your bacon dice and your green onions and put them in the fridge covered. Again, this is best done the day before. Now, let's make our lobotomizer. Heat your griddle of choice. I like cast iron, but let's use whatever you have. Add six ounces of bacon dice to your hot griddle and immediately cover with your malted pancake batter. Careful, as the bacon may pop and spit back at you. Covering this quickly will avoid this. Continue by adding two ounces of grated cheddar cheese and allow to cook for about four minutes. You'll be ready to flip the pancake when the sides are bubbly and it moves easily on the griddle. If you happen to have a bacon fat covered spoon handy, use it. It's gonna make everything slide and glide. Transfer the pancake onto a baking sheet and then flip back onto the griddle. And he goes up for the flip and the dismount. 
Add two more ounces of cheddar cheese. Then grab your pancake spatula and make sure that your pancake isn't sticking to the griddle. Once cooked, remove to a baking sheet and hold in a warm oven, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, for up to 30 minutes. While that's keeping warm, we'll cook our eggs. The first trick to cooking eggs well is to crack them before you go to the pan. This makes life so simple. Now we're looking for the perfect over easy egg keeping in mind that the eggs will continue to cook when they're out of the pan. Have everything set up and ready to go before you cook your eggs. Now look at how great those eggs look. They're not cooking on too high of a heat either. Right, we just want a nice, soft heat. Look at that slow-mo. Egg slow-mos are the best. Transfer your over easy egg to the top of your pancake. Add a sprinkle more of aged cheddar cheese maple syrup for sweetness, hot sauce for acidity and brightness, and finish with those lovely green onions. Now this is the decadent dish and it packs a lot of calories. A part of my soul is overjoyed by how all of these things come together. It's rich and satisfying, but the sweetness of the syrup cuts all that cheese. And the egg yolk, co-mingling with the hot sauce, kind of makes an impromptu hollandaise. Honestly, if you're in the market for a super indulgent brunch dish, then I not so humbly suggest putting everyone you know into a food coma with this lobotomizer. Trust me, after you taste this, you'll understand why I called it that. Now this channel is all about sharing my 30 years of restaurant experience, recipes and techniques honed from almost a decade of teaching culinary arts. If you foster a love of family through cooking like me and you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Not only will you be informed when we release new videos, but it will help other people who may enjoy this content. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, remember, I'm your chef, not your cardiologist.